You're watching WNWO-TV 24 Toledo. This is 24 News Watch. Good morning, everybody. Drug dealers get out of Toledo. That message is coming in loud and clear from local, state, and federal authorities this morning. They've just completed a massive dragnet of Toledo's crack houses. 24's Tina Yen is here now to explain. Tina? Greg Dancy, that's right. This is one of the most aggressive crackdowns on drugs in Toledo to date. In all, 60 officers from every conceivable law enforcement agency was in on this secret. Dozens of search warrants were issued by the Lucas County Prosecutor's Office and on drug houses, and this was the result. Police from Toledo, the Sheriff's Department, even seven federal police agencies busted down the doors of more than a dozen crack houses today, like this one on Detroit Avenue. Police say after the president revealed his strategy on the war on drugs in September, the number of tips police got on drug houses shot up, leading to the crackdown. Police would not talk on camera, but this news release says their objective is to focus on the drug sellers plying their trade in houses or other controlled locations. In the Detroit Avenue raid, one woman was hurt, but not arrested. A man occupying the house tonight turned away as 24 News Watch turned on its camera. He says the raid was an intrusion. Okay, you were telling me about, you said it's harassment, you're angry. Tell me about that. I'm dealing with it. You're what? I'm dealing with it. You're dealing with it, you said. One neighbor says she's relieved the house was raided, even though this is the third time it's happened. She feels safer tonight. We are protecting her identity because she is afraid for her life. I just heard they were dealing drugs. Well, you are, if you was here, you would know that they were going in and out and in and out. Police were shuffling prisoners into the Lucas County Jail all day. Patty Wagon after Patty Wagon unloaded people who didn't want their faces shown. Police are still trying to tally up the number of prisoners as well as the number of houses shut down. They say they'll have a better handle on the situation by Wednesday. Dancy. Tina, it looks like a... a big uh, dragnet, but yeah, did sure. it actually make a dent in Toledo's drug traffic at all? Well, the police won't talk, as we said, but the Lucas County prosecutor, Anthony Paisa, says definitely. Now, if you recall, last year he said there are about a hundred crack houses. Well, now he says there are even more. So, this today's drug raid really does make a difference because now mm -hmm. the drug dealers and the drug buyers are out on the street and more visible and more vulnerable to police arrest. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Tina. Greg? Dancy, a Toledo man could face several years in prison, uh, rather could face several years behind bars on drug charges. 22-year-old Scott Allen Dussault says yes, he's guilty of receiving illegal steroids. Dussault appearing in U.S. District Court on Monday, he is accused of getting steroids that were smuggled into the U.S. Dussault is awaiting his sentencing. No date has been set for that yet. By this time next week, a Toledo fugitive will be back on Ohio soil, ready to face charges of firebombing two local abortion clinics. Officials say Marjorie Reed of East Toledo will be extradited from New Jersey and should be home soon. Reed was arrested in New Jersey last week for allegedly torching an abortion clinic there and attempting to set it on fire again. Once Reed is back in Toledo, she will face charges of firebombing the Center for Choice and Toledo Medical Services. Plus, she has been charged with jumping bond. Reed fled the state a year ago, soon after she was indicted for arson. Dancy. One worker says he thought an atomic bomb went off this afternoon in Texas. Instead, it was a series of explosions ripping through a plastics plant sending up a huge fireball and showering debris up to five miles away. At least 100 people are injured and another 22 are reported missing. Survivors are stunned. A big blast blew three of us through the door, and we just kept on running until we got out of the plant. About 900 people work at the Phillips Petroleum Plastics Plant near Houston. The blast blew out windows and buckled ceilings at an elementary school about a mile away from the plant. The 700 students were evacuated along with several nearby residents. This would have been a miserable day to drive to work in San Francisco, even under the best conditions. So you can imagine how bad the situation was in the Bay Area this morning when commuters were met with fog, wind and rain, not to mention the traffic tie-ups. This was the first morning rush hour since last week's earthquake and many major freeways and bridges are closed. Some folks left two hours early in hopes of beating the traffic jams. Meanwhile, two more bodies were found today, bringing the total confirmed number of dead to 61. That number could go higher. Dozens of people are still missing. But there is encouraging news about one of the quake survivors. Doctors say 57-year-old Buck Helm is doing better, and he could be in the clear in a day or two. Helm was trapped for four days beneath the rubble of that collapsed freeway in Oakland. The freeway, I-880, is a subject of a congressional investigation into why it collapsed. 
The highway did not have reinforcements, and the investigating engineer says roads and bridges across the nation immediately need the extra support I-880 did not have. If we look at the east and central United States, where these magnitude earthquakes are a reasonable expectation within the next 30 years, we are not prepared. Tonight, a congressional committee approved a $2.85 billion earthquake aid package for the San Francisco area. But today, insurance adjusters announced their final price tag on the quake's damage, $7.1 billion. Greg? After getting off to a late start, the space shuttle Atlantis had to make an early landing today. Heavy fog, unusual in the California desert, hung over Edwards Air Force Base this morning. Then NASA was told strong winds were expected by the time of the scheduled landing, and so they had to get the shuttle down in the short time between the fog and the wind. Went off without a hitch. Another picture-perfect landing for the Atlantis, which touched down about 90 minutes sooner than scheduled. Federal investigators say it'll probably be a couple of more days until they know if drugs or alcohol played a part in a two-train collision over the weekend. That's when test results taken from crew members will be back. Final repairs to the lines are being made today in Upper Sandusky. Meantime, people living around the accident zone were checking to see if the derailed cars left anything standing. Two crew members injured in the wreck remain in stable condition this morning, contaminated by uh, 500 gallons of spilled diesel fuel oil. Uh, that will also be moved in uh, coming days, the soil that has been contaminated, that is. First reaction from CSX, one of the train owners, is that the Amtrak passenger train failed to yield the right of way. Dancing. The new president of Iran says his country is willing to help free 18 Western hostages held in Lebanon. But there is a catch. President Rafsanjani says Iran will help only if the U.S. will release several billion dollars in frozen Iranian assets that have been held since the 1979 revolution. The White House says the U.S. will not make deals for hostages. More evidence tonight that the communist bloc is crumbling. Today, the government of Hungary declared that nation a republic, which is a rejection of the communist rule in Hungary since 1956. But unlike the 1956 revolt that was crushed by the Soviet Union, today's action was met only by church bells ringing throughout the country. Hungary's government is in the process of becoming a democracy. Free elections are expected to be held sometime next year. There's still much more news and information to come on 24 News Watch when we come back. Our continuing series of profiles of candidates for Toledo City Council. And the debate over a landfill for nuclear waste continues. Those stories and much more when we come back. Tonight. A head-to-head -head battle is brewing this morning over a proposed radioactive waste dump in Michigan. Opponents of the site are preparing to meet up with the group designing the dump. The Michigan Low-Level Radioactive Waste Authority says it will be holding public meetings around Michigan. The one closest to the Toledo area will be held this Saturday at Blissfield Middle School from 10 until 5. A spokesperson with the authority says the meeting will help clear the air between the two sides. Three weeks ago, folks in Riga Township and two other communities in Michigan found out how that they could be home to the dump. It will be used to store waste from hospitals and nuclear power plants. The Lucas County prosecutor is scoring points with a group fighting for child support in Ohio. Anthony Paisa has been given a Golden Heart Award by the Association for Children for Enforcement of Support, or ACES. Paisa is being singled out among other Ohio prosecutors for filing more criminal charges against those people who don't pay their support. ACE has also handed out Heartless Awards today. The group considers Montgomery County the worst in enforcing its child support laws. But tonight we continue our series of special political profiles on the men and women running for Toledo Mayor and City Council. This is Dan Robbins' first try for political office in Toledo, but he's confident he has a lot to offer. Robbins is a mechanical engineer and would like to see his expertise used in making development decisions in the area some of which he believes have been the result of too much creative financing. Oh, and you can remember what Summit Street looked like before. I don't think anybody in Toledo wants to go back to that. But I think it's time to move on and maybe spend some of the uh, development money a little farther out from the downtown area. Back in the neighborhoods, uh, the warehouse district needs some attention. Toledo is dealing with what some people say is a major drug problem. How do you think the city should handle it? Well, I think City Council has to support a greater police presence in the areas where drugs are a problem. Uh, and I don't mean uniform police, because all that's going to do is drive, drive the drug dealers and the drug pushers out to other areas. I think what's needed is, is a good undercover setup and a larger presence in those neighborhoods, and let's start getting some of those people off the streets. Dan, what concerns do you have with the present City Council? The 
people that are going around saying, and I'm talking about Democratic candidates right now, I'm going around saying, we need a change in city council. The Democratic Party of Lucas County has controlled the Toledo City Council for 20 of the 22 past, past years. If we need a change, I think that's where we need to start. Here's another member of the GOP, a candidate who is making her first run at a public office. If and when she is elected, she aims to solve two of Toledo's big problems with one solution. But my top priority will be is to work on changing the image of the city to sell and market Toledo. To, and the and, and result of that will be bringing jobs to the city. If a young, fresh face is what Toledo needs on city council, then this should be Paula Penny Packer's year. At age 31, she is the youngest candidate on the ballot. Some of your critics charge that you're too young and too inexperienced to be on council. How do you answer them? I am, I am young. Um, it makes sense for me to get started in politics at this young age because it's very time consuming. You need a tremendous amount of energy. So quite frankly, I look at that as being a plus. Penny Packer and her husband run a video production business out of their old West End home. She also makes fitness videos for an anti-drug program sponsored by the U.S. Marines. Penny Packer is a rarity in Toledo politics, a media-wise candidate who's not afraid to use her looks to win votes. One observer has even labeled her the glamour candidate. I, I never thought of myself as glamorous. In fact, quite the opposite. In high school, I um, thought of myself rather as an ugly duckling, and so I find that amusing. Um, but for those who do find me glamorous, I would like them to know that I, am, I have brains as well. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll meet council candidates Russ Wozniak and Cal Hinkleman. In tonight's 24 News Business Report, this is day one of a one-week vacation for thousands of Toledo Jeep workers. Both the Cherokee and Grand Wagoneer plants are idle this week due to a backup of dealer inventory. Jeep union officials tell us they expect to be back on the job again in a week. The stock market started the week with a stumble. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropping about 26 points today. Trading was moderate. Paul Kiske is in here next with your five-day weather forecast. And a tiny creature is causing some big problems for Toledo water officials. We'll be right back. What is the World Tomorrow program? It analyzes news. It offers solutions to today's problems. It explains Bible prophecy. It's like no other program. Watch The World Tomorrow. The World Tomorrow is seen Sunday at 11 a.m. on WNWO Channel 24. So hopefully you're going to tell us we have more days uh, like today, yesterday. Is that, is that what you want to hear? Yeah. Then I'll tell you that. No, okay. the rest of the week does look fantastic. Indian summer has truly returned to northwest Ohio and mild temperatures for the rest of the week. Currently in the Glass City, it's rather mild, a little on the cloudy side, 59 degrees, south winds at 7 miles an hour. Humidity out there is at 81%. The barometer, 30.28 and steady. No rain here, none in the forecast, and none in the region. The high today, 70 degrees, very nice. Low, though, rather chilly, down to 32 degrees on our clear, starry skies last night. And the sun will rise at 756 and set at 642. What a great weather setting it was over the northwest Ohio landscape today. Plenty of sunshine for the early going. Mild temperatures, and boy, do the air ever smell great this time of year. Temperatures pretty much in the 60s to right around 70 degrees across the Buckeye State. And that should be the story again for tomorrow and the rest of the week. The satellite picture tonight continues to show some light cloudiness hanging on over Ohio and a good portion of, say, uh, Pennsylvania and New York back into uh, portions of Kentucky. But that is pushing off towards the east slowly. Look back to the west. Clear starry skies out there. And that spells sunshine for the early start of tomorrow. Radar summary tonight really tells the story of very quiet weather setting across a good portion of the nation. And on the latest weather map, we do see a high pressure off to the east coast and back to the west. More fair weather. Another high pressure system will push all of these clouds off towards east, and that means mild and sunny weather will continue over the next 24 hours. Not a whole lot of weather to talk about except rain out over California and snows in the Sierra Nevada. So let's check out your forecast then. Starting off for this evening, partly cloudy south winds at 10, below down to 42 degrees. Then for the rest of Tuesday, partly sunny and mild, a high of 68 degrees. Then for Tuesday evening, mostly clear and cool down to 45. And on the extended forecast for Wednesday, sunshine again at 70 degrees. Thursday, fair weather again at 73. Friday, fair at 73. So right now there is no end to the fair weather.
can't make up its mind, can it? No, I just, on October to remember. Yes, what will next week bring? Okay. Lake Erie fish are being threatened tonight, and so are you. By marine life that you can barely even see, biologists say fingernail-sized zebra mussels are clinging to reefs, reefs on which walleye lay their eggs. Scientists are afraid the eggs will have to compete for space on the reefs. The mussels moved into the lake just last year, but they multiply very fast. A female, for example, is able to lay 30,000 eggs. Biologists also say the mussels could be a threat to us, since they can clog pipes that draw water for drinking and power plants. Now, the race for the NASCAR championship continues. Jim Tishy has that story next in sports. Stay tuned. It was Barry's night with the kids. I was prepared for a mess, even a minor disaster. But this night was different. The quiet made me uneasy. And what awaited in the kitchen stopped me dead in my tracks. Hey, look, we baked you a pie. A Mrs. Smith's pie. Imagine a luscious golden fruity pie for no reason. Could this really be my goofy family? And if not, would they stay? They won't be expecting it, but they're going to love it. Mrs. Smith's pies surprise someone tonight. Look who's awake. How's my great-grandson? Oh, no. no. Grandpa, come here. I didn't mean to make him cry. This is diaper again. Oh, everything's soaked. If diaper padding doesn't absorb fast enough, it can leak. Only Loves has Leak Guard, a cup in the padding that helps catch wetness before it can leak. Placed up front for boys, in the middle for girls. So nothing's better on leaks than Loves. Doesn't that feel good? Is everything okay this morning? Dry as can be. These blue things are working. Breakfast in bed. Spoiling them already. Nothing's too good for my great-grandson. Look, juicy juice from Libby's is 100% real fruit juice. Other drinks are only 10% fruit juice. Kind of makes you wonder, what's the other 90%? Hmm? Juicy juice is a juicier juice. One of those mean hits uh, in Sunday pro football kind of reminded everybody of the Daryl Stanley yeah, incident. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Although this one was self-inflicted because yeah. uh, <laughs> Jeff Fuller was putting a hit on somebody else in this case. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have an update on his condition, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a far cry from what we were talking about earlier today. Hi, everybody. The San Francisco 49ers got some very good news late this evening. Doctors report there is no indication that safety Jeff Fuller has a spinal cord injury. Fuller went down during yesterday's Niner victory over New England. At first, it was feared that he had fractured three vertebrae and might have permanent paralysis in his right arm. But doctors ran a series of tests on Fuller and discovered small chipped bones in his neck. At this point, prospects for a full recovery are much brighter. Ohio University quarterback Anthony Thornton and Miami defensive end John Wofford are the Mid-American Conference Players of the Week. Thornton connected on 14 of 26 passes in leading the Cats to their first win of the 89 season. The Irish are still on top in the latest AP college football poll. Notre Dame has won seven in a row this season and 19 straight overall. The top five on the list remain the same, Miami, Colorado, Nebraska, and Michigan. Now here's where the shakeup took place. Alabama, Pittsburgh, Illinois, and Florida State all moved up. The Seminoles from 14th to 9th, but Southern Cal dropped a notch to 10th after losing a four-point game at Notre Dame. On the Ohio high school list, Lima Sr. is now 8th in Division I. DeVilbus and Fremont Ross are tied for 18th. In Division II, for Astoria is the top-ranked team in the state. Genoa and Swanton check in 8th and 9th, respectively, on the Division III list. In Division IV, Archbold climbs to 4th, and in Division III, Five, Sandusky St. Mary's, Lima Central Catholic, and Fremont St. Joe line up one, two, three. Benoit Benjamin's career in Italy lasted exactly four days. He found a loophole in his contract and headed back to Los Angeles this morning. The big center is expected to sign a new deal with the Los Angeles Clippers. And despite threats from the Minnesota Timberwolves, Ricky Mahorn is following through on his plan to play pro basketball in Europe. Mahorn is due to arrive in Italy tomorrow and will talk contract with the club Glaxo Verona. 
The New York Rangers are off to a great start in 89. They won again tonight, beating Vancouver 5-3. John Van Beesbrook has been incredible between the pipes. Here he stops Vancouver despite a two-man advantage. Let's move to the third period with New York in front 3-1. John Ogrodnik picks up his seventh goal of the year with a low drive to the far corner. And with the score 4-3 New York, Darren Turcott gets some insurance with a steal and the goal. The Rangers are now 7-1-1. One, and one. That is the best record in hockey. On the NHL scoreboard, New Jersey over Toronto by a 5-4 count. And they've gone to the third period of Calgary with the Caps leading the Flames 2-1. Meanwhile, in Montreal, the Canadians win a heart stopper against Hartford. Less than 30 seconds to play in the final period of a two-all tie. Montreal controls the faceoff. Peter Swoboda with a blast. Ryan Walter tips it home, his first of the year. The Canadians hang on for a 3-2 victory. The World Series is still aiming at a Friday night restart, but the earthquake has cast a long shadow over the series. In fact, Giants center fielder Brett Butler said today that the enthusiasm just isn't there anymore. Television race fans had the best seat in the house for Bill Elliott's T-bone crash with Michael Waltrip in Sunday's event at the North Carolina Motor Speedway. But the crash that meant the most involved the championship contender, Dale Earnhardt. His back end was rearranged by Sterling Marlin and some lengthy pit work resulted in a 20th place finish. The victory went to Mark Martin, his first in Winston Cup competition that ended seven years of frustration for the Batesville, Arkansas driver. So, with just two races left on the Winston Cup schedule, Rusty Wallace has opened up a 109-point lead over Dale Earnhardt. And Earnhardt better not look back because Mark Martin is gaining on him. The number three man only 19 points behind. Waltrip and Elliott complete the top five. And finally, the Cleveland Browns and the Chicago Bears, teams with great traditions, met in our Monday night football game. Both clubs trying to snap a two-game losing streak. And there you see the final score from Cleveland Stadium. And that's it for the late look at sports, Greg. So some of the enthusiasm might not be back in the World Series. It's got to be tough for those guys living out there and trying to uh, come back, not knowing when they're going to play, for one thing. Well, you know one thing I was thinking about, though, earlier today? Mm -hmm. They may be excited, but let's face it, they really can't come out and say, yeah, we're, we're gung-ho to get back on Good the point. playing field while people are still digging out loved ones. So Good I point. think they're kind of caught in between. Yeah. They don't want to make it appear as if, but, but let's face it, there's a lot of money, a lot of prestige, a lot of pride involved. It still is the World Series. These guys want to get back on the field yeah. when you read the bottom line. Okay. We'll see you on Friday, I guess. Yeah. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. This Halloween, discover the truth behind the man, the myth, the legend of Dracula. Live from Transylvania. Warren, I tell you, if this duck bites me, you're going to get it. Regis Philbin. And here are my pecs, too. Kathy Lee Gifford. You need me desperately. Hot guests. Kirk Cameron with the longer hair. Great food. Do you cook breakfast in the morning? No. Fabulous fashions. You ever seen legs in your life like these ladies have? They're not that great. And a little monkey business. Got a room for us, but it's across the street. Can you make it? All you need is live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Weekdays at 9 on 24 Toledo. She was an addict who smuggled Colombian cocaine. On my next show, she's undercover, but telling it all. Then the Colombians really come after you, kill your children, kill your family, kill everybody. Plus, multimillionaire Percy Ross gives away his money.